Well, this is a biography of uh, Vivian Woodward, which uh, I wrote um, in 2005, I think it was. Um, and this details the whole of his uh, life and career, um, uh, from, from his days in Clacton, right up to his international career, his uh, Olympic gold medals, uh, his First World War service, um, his last matches for Clacton in 1920, and uh, his uh, ultimate retirement and um, sad death uh, in 1954. Here we are, this is the site of the old Clacton Town Football Club. This is where Vivian Woodward would have played his matches on the football ground there. And as you can see, it's now called Waterglade. And uh, I think it'd be really nice if it was actually called Woodward. Uh, this, is, uh, this is FC Clacton's ground now. Um, they moved here in 1987 from a site in Old Road Clacton, which is where Vivian Woodward would have played. They were there from um, the eight, well, almost 100 years in the old ground. They were there from the early 1890s right up to 1987. And that's where he would have played, down at uh, the old road ground. He took part in two Olympic Games, uh, captain in the Great Britain team uh, in the 1908 and 1912 Olympics. The 1908 Olympics was in, um, in London, the 1912 in Stockholm. Um, and uh, Great Britain won both of the, uh, the gold medal in both of those games and Vivian Woodward was the captain. Um, and 1912, exactly 100 years ago now, was the last time Great Britain won any sort of medal in the Olympic Games football tournament. Well, I think Vivian Woodward was uh, certainly got a claim to be one of the greatest players of all time ever played for England. He uh, was centre forward and captain of England in the early years of the 20th century. He scored 29 goals in 23 full internationals, which still today is the record for the number of goals scored per game. Um, so it shows you the sort of quality of the man. Well, he was uh, born in South London, but he moved to Clacton when he was about five years old. And he showed a lot of promise at school. And in fact, even at the age of 13 or 14, his uh, sports teacher at school uh, told his father that he was going to play for England one day. Um, he played for the school team. He was um, spotted by Clacton Town FC, who signed him up for their first team, and he just went on uh, from there. He played for Essex County side, which in those days, county teams were, um, uh, were much bigger matches than they are today, county matches. Um, and he was spotted by Spurs um, while playing the county, and they signed him up uh, for, Spur, for, for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, they were in the Southern League at that time, um, but he helped them to promotion to the uh, Football League. They were elected into the second division of Football League, and he scored their first ever goal in the Football League. He was spotted by Clacton Town when he played in a, a game um, for Ashham College, which was his school, against Clacton Town's reserves. And the, the, uh, the, the the uh, Clacton Town spotted him during that match. They signed him up for the second team and he immediately proved to be so good that they, they moved him to the first team. County matches were a, were a big event in those days. I mean, they don't, I, don't, I don't even know if counties play these days, but they uh, were, were a big event in those days and, and the, the bigger clubs used to send people along, scouts along, to spot possible talent and uh, Spurs spotted Vivian Woodward at a county match and they signed him up for, for their second 11, uh, for the reserve team. Um, at that time they were in the Southern League, um, but he helped them win promotion to the Football League. Um, and they asked him to come along for a trial with Spurs' second team, the reserve team, and he played for them for a few matches and they were very impressed with him, Spurs, and he got promoted to the first, first team quite quickly. Um, he, they were then in the Southern League at that time, the uh, Spurs, um, but he got them, he was a main influence in them getting promoted to the Football League proper um, in the second division. And um, during that first season, he was, um, he scored, um, he scored their, sorry, during the first, during the first season, he was their top player and he scored uh, many goals for them. In that first, first season in the second division, he was their top player 
um, and he helped them to win promotion at their first attempt. They were promoted to the first division and he was named as Football League Player of the Year at the end of that season. Um, he then, at the end of that season, having got them promoted, having been named Footballer of the Year, um, he decided to retire. Um, he was at the height of his uh, career really, and he just decided that he had enough of it. Um, he was uh, always an amateur, he never claimed, he, he didn't even claim expenses, uh, for travel expenses, he played as an amateur all his life and he was an architect by profession and he thought that his, uh, he, he needed to spend more time in his architectural business and that's why he retired from the game, um, from the top level game. Um, he did, um, uh, because he wanted to stay with the Essex County side, he wanted to keep his Essex registration so he could continue playing for Essex County, he signed up for Chelmsford um, as a sort of part-time player for Chelmsford and he played a few matches for Chelmsford um, during the uh, uh, early part of the, I think it was the 1908-9 season. And then about a few, a few months into the season, Chelsea uh, approached him and asked him if he would sign for them. And uh, he agreed to play for Chelsea, so he made a comeback for Chelsea in 1909 and continued to play for them up till the First World War. While he was with Chelsea, he um, played, well he continued to play, I mean he had played for England as a Spurs player and he continued to play for uh, Chelsea, uh, play for England as a, as, a, um, as, a, as a full international for England. He was appointed England captain and um, he, uh, he continued to play in amateur internationals as well as full of internationals because he was an amateur. Um, he played 23 times full internationals and another 47 in amateur internationals. And of course the amateur internationals in those days were, were different to how they might be today because a lot of the countries he actually played against like France and Holland and Belgium, um, they were their full international teams. Although it was England's amateur team, he played against the full international teams of uh, these continental countries. And uh, there was one memorable match when England beat France 15-0 um, Vivian Woodward scored eight of the goals and then again against Holland he scored six of the goals, I think in a 12-0 uh, defeat. Because his uh, major achievement as an amateur was to, um, um, to captain the Great Britain winning team in the 1908 and 1912 Olympic Games. Um, he, he played, he, he uh, won the gold medal for England, for Great Britain, sorry. He, he, the Great Britain team won the gold medal and he was captain of the team uh, for both those Olympics. And uh, the 1908 of course was in London, um, um, at the White City had played, and the 1912, 100 years ago this year, um, he won again in Stockholm. And that's the last time that England, Great Britain have won any sort of medal in the Olympic Games for football. He was, he was just a real gentleman, I mean he just loved the game of football and um, he was quite wealthy obviously, he was quite a wealthy person so he just felt that he could give something back to the game in that way and uh, all his life he was recognised as a true gentleman. Other players um, used to sometimes call him Sir on the field, the referees sometimes used to ask him for his opinion when there was a, a difficult decision to make knowing that he would say the right thing, I mean you know if it was an offside or something close offside they knew that Vivian Woodward would actually give the, the correct uh, verdict. In fact one time um, he was awarded a penalty, or the, I think it was when he was playing for Chelsea, they were awarded a penalty and Vivian Woodward thought it shouldn't have been a penalty, that he wasn't fouled and um, he deliberately kicked the ball away from the goal um, just so he couldn't take advantage of, the, uh, of being awarded a penalty which he thought was unfair. Um, so he was just a, a real gentleman and everyone looked up to him. He was idolised in Europe as well, it wasn't just in this country. Well, in full internationals, he scored 29 goals in 23 internationals, which is still today the record number of goals per international. Um, put that in uh, comparison, is uh, Wayne Rooney has also just scored his 29th goal, and he's played in 74 internationals. Um, so that's just a comparison with uh, one of today's modern players. I think, in fact, he's still eighth in the all-time list of, of actual number of goals scored, and that goes right back, you know, we're talking over a hundred years ago, um, he's, he's been in that top ten ever since and it wasn't until 
1955, the year after he died, that Nat Lofthouse and Tom Finney both overtook his title of uh, his, his number of 29 goals, but uh, they both played in a lot more internationals to score theirs. I'm Stephen Andrews, co-owner of FC Clacton. This is Vivian Woodward. There's a campaign from uh, Clacton to try and find his missing memorabilia. There's 23 full England caps around somewhere and we're determined to track them down. 47 amateur caps, these countless county caps, England under 21 caps, a gold medal from the winning team in 1908 and 1912 Olympics. Out there somewhere is all this memorabilia and we want to find it and put it together in a last impermanent exhibition to the great man. Apparently, we haven't had this confirmed, but there's uh, various rumours to say there was at least two caps at our old ground. We moved from there in 1987 and we're determined as well, that's our starting point, to try and track down those two. We'd love to have a permanent, lasting memorial to the great man and all that he achieved and with this picture we'll take pride of place in there, along with anything else we can find along the way. Vivian Woodward would have played here from 1895 to 1901 when he went off to play for Spurs um, and he came back for one final season in 1919-1920 season um, and that was uh, he retired at the end of the 1920 season and that was the end of his playing career. Well the entrance to the football ground was just there um, by the big Iceland sign over there. Um, in, in front of this was the uh, car park for the ground and then the pitch itself went back, um, back down that way uh, past Hall, Halfords and Carpet Riot uh, and down to the back there with the terrace in at the back, uh, back wall there. Um, we're now in Clacton Library in the Clacton and District Local History Society's museum and uh, this is a special exhibition uh, case here on Clacton Town Football Club with a special extra bit, well, a special part of it being all, all about Vivian Woodward. Um, we are going to uh, put on a bigger display uh, in the next week or so um, on one of these boards here, um, with the whole, whole board of uh, Vivian Woodward display uh, to coincide with the opening of the Olympics because of course his, uh, his role in the uh, Great Britain Olympic team 1908-1912. Unfortunately, of course, what we don't have here are any of his caps, any of his medals, anything to do with his time as, a, as, a, as an international, um, either as a full international or as an amateur international. And of course, that's it's what we would love to have in this uh, case here, in this display case, is uh, one of his medals, one of his caps, whatever we can find. But uh, we're still looking for them. Well, the exhibition will be open to the public as from the 24th of July, um, although we're hoping to have an, a, a proper official opening a bit later on, but the public will be able to see it as from the 24th of July. Well, the first thing we're doing is to put a blue plaque on his house. Um, that's uh, more or less been agreed now, and we've got the money in place for that. Well, this is the house Vivian Woodward lived in. It was actually built by his father, John Woodward, who was an architect and he built it in about 1891-92, somewhere around about then, um, when, the, when the family moved permanently to Clacton. Well, the, the whole Woodward family lived here. The, um, his, he, he lived here with his parents and his brothers and sisters. I think there were about eight or nine uh, brothers and sisters all together, and they all, they all lived here. This was their home. Although they did keep a house in South London as well, where his father used, um, because he, he worked in London, so he used to um, stay up there during the week. But, um, but the family lived here, the whole family lived here for, for many years. Well, he moved up to London as well in the early 1900s um, because he also worked as an architect in London. But this was still his family home, so he used to come back and visit frequently. Um, I, I'm not actually sure when the Woodward family moved finally from here, but I think it was sometime in the 20s or 30s, but I'm not absolutely certain about that. But it was their family home right up till then. Talking about putting a statue to him in the town centre, or the other possibility is um, 
uh, renaming the FC Clacton ground itself, the Vivian Woodward ground, or, uh, and have a set of gates at the entrance, the Vivian Woodward gates, or that sort of thing. We haven't finally decided exactly what we're going to do, but we certainly want to have some lasting memorial to him because it's um, so well deserved. He's certainly one of, if not the, greatest centre-forwards this country's ever had. Um, of course, there are a lot of others that um, w w could qualify for that. People like um, Nat Lofthouse and Tommy Lawton and Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer, people like that. But certainly, uh, Vivian Woodward should be spoken of in the same breath as all these people. Um, he does still hold the record for the highest number of goals scored per international. He scored uh, 29 goals in 23 internationals. Um, which is the record, and to put that into some sort of context, Wayne Rooney's just scored his 29th goal, but it's taken him 74 internationals to reach that total. Um, he is still, although he played um, uh, 100 years ago, and he only played in 23 internationals, he's still number eight in the all-time goal scorers record for England. And um, like I say, uh, Wayne Rooney scores, played in 74, some other players like Bobby Charlton, uh, and um, Alan Shearer and Gary Lineker have played in a lot more than that. Um, so he still holds his place very well um, in that and I think that um, he's certainly to be spoken of as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, centre forward England's ever had. Well, um, I, I personally never heard of Vivian Woodward until the 1980s, I think it was, when I met his niece. Um, I'm chairman of the Clacton and District Local History Society, and his niece, Nora Timmons, was the president of the Local History Society. And uh, I just went to talk to her one day. She was born and bred in Clacton herself in 1903, I think she was born. And uh, I just went round to talk to her about the old days. And uh, she produced all this uh, material on her uncle, Vivian Woodward who, as I say, I'd never heard of at the time, and she produced uh, various bits of uh, memorabilia, photograph, um, the, the telegram his brother had sent when uh, on seeing Vivian Woodward in his first ever international that he'd sent back to the family. Um, there were some other bits and pieces, like a fixture list and that sort of thing. And um, as she talked to me uh, about him, I realised that there was someone here from Clacton who should be given uh, wider recognition. And the more I looked into it, the more, of course, that, uh, that, that came true. And I had no idea at that time that we'd had such a, a, a famous, well-known footballer living in Clacton. And unfortunately, uh, I think that's still the case with most people that uh, living in Clacton. They don't know anything about Vivian Woodward. And that's one of the reasons I wrote the book and why we're putting on this exhibition now is to try and revive his memory. And uh, along with Stephen Andrews of the uh, Cla uh, FC Clacton, um, we're trying to uh, raise money to get a lasting memorial to Vivian Woodward in the town. I don't know why he's so forgotten. I mean, I don't think he should be forgotten. And uh, we're certainly trying to uh, revive his memory, at least in Clacton, um, because he deserves it. I mean, I, you know, he's certainly got a claim to be the greatest centre forward of all time and possibly the greatest captain of all time um, for England. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of others that um, it, I mean, you, you wouldn't automatically put him at number one. I mean, there are people like uh, Nat Lofthouse and Tommy Lawton and Gary Lineker and people that uh, have got an equal claim, probably. But, I mean, none of them are forgotten <laughs> in the same way that Vivian Woodward is. And I really don't know why he's just a forgotten figure, because certainly he should be right up there.